are its electronic sensors. These sensors allow it to accurately detect a target at long range and then direct the weapons to destroy it with pinpoint accuracy. During World War II, Admiral Burke was among the pioneers of these new sensors, using some of the first naval radars to come into use. On the Burke-class destroyers, the most prominent electronic sensors are for the Aegis radar system, far more advanced than the primitive naval radars of World War II. The Aegis radar is a phased array radar. Unlike traditional radars which rotate to look for targets, the Aegis is electronically steered. These four flat panels give the Burke 360 degree coverage every second. The speed and accuracy of Aegis allow for a high degree of automation. We have a very highly automated computerized system so we can take advantage of a rapidly developing scenario that we can respond very, very quickly. And in a highly automated computerized system like the Aegis weapon system, we can detect, track, and engage an incoming threat very quickly. traditional role for destroyers is anti-submarine missions. As in the case of air defense, the essential ingredient in this mission is its electronic detection system. Located under the bow of the ship, the sonar is the key sensor in submarine hunting. On the bow of the ship is the SQS-53 Charlie sonar, a very high power, multi-frequency, multi-path type of active sonar. And so we have a great active capability to send active sonar transmissions out to, to listen for a return and find out where that submarine is. On the after part of the ship is a very sophisticated towed array passive sonar system that we trail behind us almost a mile behind the ship. And so we can put that down at various depths of water. So if a submarine is running deep, we can put our sensor down deep to listen for it. So it's a terrific one-two punch. A destroyer in World War II was usually on its own in collecting data on enemy positions. Today, the Burke receives data from many sources, including satellites, surveillance aircraft, and other ships in the battle group. Critical data can be beamed around the world over digital data channels, linking surface warships operating anywhere in the vast expanses of sea. We will link with a number of different platforms that are in the battle group. It could be other ships in the area um, or other ships even over the horizon. Uh, they'll send us the information that they have. We'll send them the information that we have so you get one overall combined picture. We can use a helicopter on board for that, that exact same thing also. Send the helicopter out over the horizon, talk to have him come up to an altitude where we can see him and he can transmit his information back to us. We'll get his entire picture. That way we get one combined overall picture of what's going on around us. In decades past, the captain fought from the bridge of the destroyer. Today, the enormous flow and convergence of data from its advanced sensors and the need to coordinate the destroyer's actions with other components of the battle group means that the captain will fight the ship from deep in its hull in the Combat Information Center, or CIC. From there, a Burke-class destroyer can use not only its own weapons to attack an enemy target, but the weapons of other ships and aircraft of the battle group. This flexibility is made possible by the advanced command and control features of modern warships. Destroyers have traditionally been capable in all mission areas. Even uh, Admiral Burke's Desron 23 destroyers were capable in air and certainly capable in surface. That's uh, where their most famous track record was in, and ASW. Uh, with DDG-51 USS Arleigh Burke, what you're getting is a destroyer that's capable in all mission areas, but it's perhaps uh, more capable than other ships in all mission areas. For all their technological differences, the modern destroyer plays much the same role as its World War II ancestor, including air defense, surface attack, and anti-submarine warfare. As the threats to surface warships have changed, 
the destroyer has adapted to meet them. Today, the modern destroyer remains the workhorse of the Navy.